Um, all right, everybody, it is officially 1220. I hope everyone has been able to meet somebody new. Yes, I've met some new people, even though I think I invited all of you guys. <laughs> um, I do want to thank you today and definitely, um, you know, this is the goal of Salmon is to not be in the same place over and over and over and over again. So our goal is to go to new churches and go to new parts of the metro area and to kind of hear and see like what's going on and what's happening. Um, so always pay attention. Uh, if you notice, I'm recording all of this, just like we did at Jessup. The difference is I have two mics instead of one mic and we'll have a little bit of a better audio for, for this recording. Um, so uh, yeah, how's everyone doing so far? Doing good? Okay. We are going to start with an inspirational story. So if I could have a volunteer for prayer, could I have somebody just kind of bless our time? Yeah, I can do that. Oh, awesome, Ben. Thank you. Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for um, yeah, all of these, uh, these labors in your harvest um, that you've sent um, us out or mobilized us or um, in doing your work. Fulfilling the Great Commission all around the world and um, where we live locally, Lord Jesus. Thank you for this food. We pray that it's a blessing to our body and that this time would just be encouraging uh, for each one of us. Uh, in Jesus' name, amen. 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 All right. So this is our, our moment today that we want to kind of spend just a, a hair moment to talk about. Many times our ethnocentric culture uh, can cause us to see being a missionary in a certain light that focuses on our preferences. We see missionaries, even early missionaries, as being white or European. But in God's eyes, there is no race, there is no Jew or Greek. He will always use anyone who is yielded to him for his purposes. Today, we're gonna look at the benefits of enrolling in the Perspectives course this winter. I can assure you that it will change your heart, your mind, I'm sorry, it's in, yeah, in the winter, in the spring, your mind and your global outlook. God may even tap on your shoulder and asking who should go. So today's story is about an unlikely man, an African-American man in a colonial America who was willing to yield himself to the touch of the master. You have probably heard of George L-I-E-L-E, -L -E, Leal. Okay. He, is a he has a fascinating story, and this will challenge your thinking. Give me a work I requested to my Lord and Master. I did not care how the means were, but only to try and see how good I would do it. That is George Leal, a missionary to Jamaica, 1970 to, I'm sorry, 1750 to 1820. Now unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that works within us. Ephesians 3.20 the sharp clip-clop of a horse hooves resounded through the meeting place. The crowd of worshipers kidnapped from Africa to serve on plantations in Jamaica nervously parted to let the colonial plant planter through. Pastor George Leo looked up from the bread and the cup of the Lord's table as the intruder bullied his way forward. Come, old Leo, give my horse the sacrament. A string of curses followed. No, sir, you are not fit yourself to receive it. No one moved. After a few tense moments, the colonial planter turned his horse and left the way he had come. In 18th century society, Leal expected such confrontations. Born a slave around 1750 in Virginia, Leal grew up in servitude. In 1770, his master, Henry Sharp, who was a British loyalist, moved him and his family to Georgia. Three years later, while attending Buckhead Creek Baptist Church with his master's family, Leo heard the gospel and trusted Christ as his savior. He was soon baptized and accepted into the membership of, his, of this church, and it was made up of both the, the colonials and the slaves. At that time, Leo also offered his life to the service of Christ. He later wrote, I, will, I full well recollect 
I request of my Lord and Master to give me a work. I do not care how mean it was, only to try and see how good I would do it. God would work abundantly in Leo's wildest expectations. Leo immediately began preaching among his fellow slaves. His church, recognizing God's blessing on his ministry, licensed Leo to preach. Soon after, his master freed him from slavery to pursue the Lord's work. In 1775, just two years into his itinerant ministry, Leo helped establish the Silver Bluff Church. This church, located across the South Carolina border from, uh, from Augusta, Georgia, was probably the first African-American church in America. Leo continued preaching on plantations until the war for independence forced him to settle down. <laughs> in 1778, he and his family moved into British-occupied Savannah, where he organized and pastored the first African Baptist church. With the British defeat in 1783 and the uncertainty of the war's aftermath, Leal decided to emigrate to Jamaica. He indentured himself to a family of British loyalists to pay his family's travel expenses. Together, they sailed to Kingston, Jamaica. Though a free man himself, Leal bought his home near the colonial plantations where slaves from Africa labored. To support his family, he worked as a farmer and transported goods by horse and wagon. As he had in Georgia, Leal preached the gospel, and soon he had planted another church in Kingston. As the work grew to the surrounding plantations, Leal recruited men to become preachers and pastors. Leal's training ministry followed a pattern that had begun years before in the American colonies by a man named George da David George. Leal led George to Christ and mentored him. Not long after, David George became the pastor of the newly formed Silver Bluff Church. Around that time, Leo left the around the time that Leo left for the United States for Jamaica, David George had immigrated to Nova Scotia, and for about ten years, uh, settling and then after about ten years, he settled <coughs> into Sierra Leone, and started to plant churches himself. In Jamaica, Leal sought disciples in the mold of David George to multiply the work. Under Leal's ministry, the Lord recruited his own servants from among the slaves and former slaves in Jamaica, including George Gibbs and Moses Baker. Soon, new assemblies of believers spread across the island. By 1791, okay, so Leal's about 41 years old. In 1791, he wrote to a friend in England, of 500 professions of faith. By 1814, and the belated arrival of the first British missionary to Jamaica, 8,000 slaves had already trusted Christ as their savior, and many churches dotted across the plantations. In the face of discrimination, disrespect, and violence, the work would continue to grow even after Leal's death by 1832, 20,000 in Jamaica would claim Christ. God answered Leal's prayer to give him a work and blessed it beyond what he could have ever have dreamed. Ten years before William Carey left Britain for India, 29 years, uh, and 29 years before, <laughs> I mess up this name all the time, Ad Adoniram Judson, if I'm saying that right, left New England for Burma, Leal had left Georgia to reach Jamaica with the gospel. Among a despised and abused people, he faithfully served the Lord in poor physical conditions, but with amazing spiritual results. Leo left behind a shining example for those yearning to be used of God. First, he was willing to do the mean things for God. And in the late 18th century, the word mean described low social, low economic status. Leo was content to remain poor, working among slaves to do the Lord's work. Leo committed to try and see how good I would do it. This attitude of Colossians 3.23, and whatever you do, do it wholeheartedly as to the Lord. The mindset is rooted in that goal of 1 Corinthians 10.31, where, uh, wherever therefore, sorry, this is uh, King James. Wherever therefore ye eat or drink or whatsoever ye do, do all to the glory of God. 
God honored Leal's humble devotion by blessing him with a bountiful harvest. Today, God continues to defy the odds as he transforms and empowers those whom the world would ignore. He is seeking humble believers who are willing to serve wherever he leads. As God promised, he can do exceedingly more above all that we ask or think according to the power at work within us. Surrender yourself to his use. Plead with God, give me a work. Use me in such a way that you alone get the glory for all that is done. Amen. Okay. Amen. So this is, uh, this is coming from, um, it's a, a missions devotional um, from Daring Devotion. Uh, that's where we're getting these. We want to inspire you guys, right? We are on the shoulders of so many saints who have come before us, and we don't even know their names. And so we want to, you know, we want to let everyone know, you know, the glory of what the Lord is doing. So we want to give you some moments to be like, did you know that there was a slave who became a preacher who then got free? And put himself back in the servitude to go to Jamaica long before William Carey ever answered his call. Right? It's kind of very similar to the Moravians. You know, give me a casket. I'm going somewhere. So um, with this story, we're going to do uh, just a short six or seven minutes of prayer. And I want to ask you guys. Sorry, I'm half blind. <laughs> <laughs> so this is what I want you guys to pray for at your tables, if you guys would, with one another. Do I long for God to use me? Some of you may say, well, I'm past my usefulness. No, you're not. No, you're not. That's what Satan wants you to think. You're not. You have more influence now than you really think you do. I guarantee you. Okay, your role in society is pivotal. And, and we need to believe that. Okay, if I prayed, Lord, give me a work, am I afraid of what God might give me? What would keep me from embracing a lower standard of living in order to reach others for Christ? If others consider the work God gives me to be insignificant, what promises of God's word can I claim in order to stay safe, faithful? Okay, so we're going to spend the next seven minutes or so, if you guys would. Um, you can pray, take turns. You can popcorn pray, everyone together. Um, let me just have you guys go ahead and, and jump into that. 